Big story today. Senator Rand Paul announces a class action lawsuit against the president over gathering of Americans' phone records. Other top intelligence officials, including the NSA director, also named in the suit. The senator speaking to reporters about an hour ago. On behalf of myself, Freedom Works, and everyone in America that has a phone, we are filing suit against the President of the United States in defense of the Fourth Amendment. We will ask the question in court whether a single warrant can apply to the records of every American phone user all of the time, without limits, without individualization. This, we believe, will be a historic lawsuit. We think it may well be the largest class action lawsuit ever filed on behalf of the Bill of Rights. While reacting to Senator Paul, the Justice Department just released this statement saying this. We remain confident that the program is legal as at least 15 judges have previously found. Well, we have our own judge today, Judge Andrew Napolitano, our Fox News senior judicial analyst. What do you think, Judge? Is there a case here? Yes, I think Senator Paul has, a, has an excellent case, and he's right. It will be the biggest uh, class action in support of the uh, Bill of Rights, the biggest class action in history. A class action is when a small group of plaintiffs, in this case himself, sues in behalf of others who've suffered the same injury. The NSA has, by its silence, pretty much admitted that the others includes everybody in the United States. But in that circumstance, when you're representing so many, do you have to give examples for each and every person that you're representing and how they have been harmed? Very good question. No. The court will allow what's called a bellwether, a fancy legal phrase for, we'll take one or two people as examples and we'll assume that the injury that those one or two suffered are common among uh, the class. That's what happens in a class action case, say in a consumer product situation. Somebody's harmed by a consumer product, and they sue in behalf of all consumers who've used the product, even though the level of harm is different. Here, the level of harm is essentially the same, and here the NSA essentially admits what it's been doing. It's been gathering this evidence about all Americans on the basis of single, what we call general warrants, not warrants that identify the specific target. Senator Paul and his fellow plaintiffs are merely asking a federal court to decide if that's lawful and if it's not to make them stop is it a constitutional question yes it's a constitutional question and here's the constitutional question in a nutshell does the requirement of the fourth amendment which says when the government wants to search something like your phone records or your phone calls it has to identify the person to be searched the place to be searched and it has to come up with a reason to search that individual does that apply to the nsa because the nsa says we're not governed by the fourth amendment we're not interested in uh in solving crime we can listen to what everybody says whether we can identify them or not well and that's what the justice department is saying in their yes. response 15 judges already said that's okay so how is this case different because 13 of those 15 judges are on the fisa court and when the FISA court makes a ruling, there's nobody resisting the ruling. It's a judge with just the government appearing before it. The other two judges went both ways on this. They were federal judges who had trials in their courtroom with lawyers representing the NSA and lawyers representing the plaintiffs. And one of these judges said, this is unconstitutional. You can't have one warrant for 100 million people. And the other said, it is constitutional. It's an appropriate response to 9-11. Uh, so those two differing decisions mean that this case will eventually get to the Supreme Court. We'll probably have a third decision from this case that Senator Paul just filed. Andy McCarthy was on our show just last hour. Bob Mueller, former director of the FBI, says Andy's one of the finest prosecutors in history when it comes to combating I, terror. I agree with Bob Mueller on well, and Andy's qualifications. One of the things, Andy and I were talking a little bit about this topic, and he said one of the things that can come up here is not so much a constitutional issue, but an issue about the Patriot Act. And he says that the NSA has, and this argument has been made in court, and maybe it does need to be made, that the NSA is saying we have to collect everybody's phone records. We have to get the judges and Johns and, and Keiths and everybody else that's in our, in our room right now right. so that the algorithms work, so that we can actually see the people that are doing the bad things. We need everybody's records. Well, then, what about that th argument? Then they would need to change the Constitution because the Constitution expressly prohibits it. One of the reasons it prohibits it is because, because what the NSA is doing to us today in 2014 is substantially similar to what British soldiers did to us in the colonial era. They got a general warrant in London 
from a judge who met in secret, which authorized them to search any of the columnists they wanted for whatever they wanted to find. They came over here in this country, presented the general warrant on various columnist doors, and started searching away. Guess what? It okay. was the last straw before we fought the revolution. So could you do something, and I'm not trying to throw a bunch of hypothetics, but Rand Paul was just talking about the 300 million Americans whose phone records have been collected. Right. What happens if it's something general uh, for a specific group? Still millions of people, but we're going to look at 25 to 35-year-old males in this country because this is the group we're targeting. You know, Would that be allowed? This is the great clash between privacy and safety. And when people are afraid most people will opt for safety rather than privacy. They'll say anything to keep me safe. But they don't realize that they are losing the safety of their liberties. The Constitution was written to force the government intentionally to jump through hoops before it could invade our privacy. Requiring the government to identify whose phone calls it wants to listen to is not asking very much. It's just asking them to follow the Constitution. But what do you think families of the victims of 9-11 would say to that? Sure, we want our liberties, but if we had these programs in place, then our, our relatives wouldn't be dead. I think that uh, families of 9-11 have a very legitimate beef that the government should have done a lot more uh, to have kept their, uh, their loved ones alive, and, and I share their grief. But I also share the love of the Constitution that many of those people that now are in heaven had. We don't want a government here that is just like the governments we have fought overseas, tyrannical and not respecting a freedom. We want governments that respect freedom, that do things the right way. Real quick, what do you think the timeline is on this? I mean, we, we have the announcement. What are the next you mean steps? Senator Paul's Where does it case? go? It and if it's going to the Supreme Court, what are we looking at? It'll probably be assigned to a federal district court judge in Washington, D.C. this afternoon or tomorrow morning. The government will answer. There will be oral argument. I would expect a decision by September. I would expect this will be on the uh, Supreme Court's docket about a year to a year and a half from now. But ultimately, it will get there because so many judges are starting to weigh in that the, the whole legal community and judicial world will beg for one, one firm and consistent answer. It'll be fascinating. Judge, yes. great to have you on oh, set. Pleasure, As always, thank, thank you. Thank you.